Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you my new procedural tool for creating fences. The idea behind this tool is to be able to create this kind of uh, fences made out of uh, modules. Uh, it doesn't have to be that perfectly aligned. Uh, in fact, this tool is aiming towards a more organic look, like these examples here. But the idea behind all this is to be able to create a more or less perfectly aligned fence based on the modules that we are going to be feeding the tool with. This is a collection of different uh, looks depending on how we tweak the parameters of the same tool. It also varies a lot depending on the modules you fit the tool with. Once we are in our scene, we drag and drop the tool and it's got uh, four inputs, which is which I called planks, curve, terrain and doors. I will be explaining what uh, is doing what in, in a minute. As you may have uh, guessed, this is a curve based tool. So we could be creating our basic layout for the curve first. First thing we do is we go and fit dynamically the tool with a variety of planks. I just uh, this, uh, downloaded some of the Megascans assets. I'm going to be dragging them here. I can select up to as many as I want. I'm going to be, for instance, creating uh, the tool base on these three three inputs and the tool is still is expecting a terrain to lay out the, the fence over. So we go to the terrain section and we look for a geometry input. Uh, sorry, world liner input, start selection. I select the floor and these modules. So the tool actually uh, takes care of, uh, of the terrain he's going to be creating the fence onto. So it's terrain aware, as you can see here. I had to create uh, the tool in a way that we could dynamically change the orientation of the, of the inputs because there is some uh, inconsistency in the way they are created. Some of the assets are, are oriented like this. Some others are oriented like this. Some of them are uh, sitting on the floor and some others don't. First thing, I need to look for the uh, axis in which this needs to be created. Yeah, it, needs, it looks like it's this one. And I don't want a full range variation between minus 90 and plus 19, so I get rid of this. Then I need to uh, align this part as well. So it needs to be rotated. Let's try this one. Put on the Y. Yeah, this one. And without the full range again. And we can have a slight uh, variation in the angle between in the, in the set axis. Here you can see the result. So I will keep it low. So the next thing we need to tell the tool is which uh, dimensions, which dim dimension we want the tool to align the, the, the planks. Uh, so in this orientation, I think it's the X. Yeah, that's it. So as you can see, uh, all the planks are perfectly aligned based on their dimensions. So we could be in having a much wider or thicker uh, board and it will be uh, offsetting the rest of the boards accordingly. I'm going to be tweaking the Z uh, angle again because uh, it, I'm not getting uh, everything I can from, from the plank. I mean, if I rotate this uh, plank uh, minus 180 and 
plus 180 in the z-axis, I can have the same board to be displayed uh, facing uh, front and also facing backwards. Um, there is some offset, as you can see here, between the curve points and, uh, and, the, and the curve and, 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 and on the way the, the fence is being created. And it's because I added this control to harden the corners in case we want to create a more smooth uh, transition. So to be more uh, accurate to our initial points, I can uh, increase this strength. Let's jump on the size. So I got this, uh, uh, this general scale control. And as you can see here, uh, the bigger the planks are, the less they are. So the tool is uh, automatically adjusting how many planks there are depending on its size. So the ramp is gonna be controlling the amount of, uh, I mean, the, the, the size of the, of, the, of the elements depending on their position along the curve. So if there is one one, there is no change, but if I set this to two, which means doubling the size, you can see here that we, uh, there, is, there is this, uh, uh, this peak shape showing in the, say, in the size of the, of, the, of the fences. So it's up to the user to remove or create new points, as I'm gonna be doing now. And if you want just a linear, uh, a linear progression, you can right click and add one more key. And as you can see, it's gonna be uh, creating this kind of slope. And this is regarding the position. Um, with this control, we select the, the axis that we want the tool to be using for seating the planks on top of the, of the floor. As you can see, this is the, the ground axis. In this case, the default, uh, the default uh, uh, value for this is correct, but it's not always like this. And then it's this uh, sideways offset I included to uh, have a bit more control on the on how much these uh, planks go away from the curve. Yeah, like that. And uh, we got uh, finally this. Uh, I mean, th there is also vertical offset in case we don't have mm, our our. Uh, static meshes are not perfectly modeled and we want them to intersect with our floor. So I included this control to basically uh, offset them in the vertical axis. Then next thing is I also included this sliding along the curve and what it's gonna be doing is that uh, it's gonna be sliding the planks accordingly to this curve. And the more extreme this change is happening, the more chances to have a blank, as you can see here. And as you can see here, we can keep on editing our, oops, our curve. And uh, we can have as many pillar operations as we wish. And we have to copy reference and paste this in here. And we have unique control per, uh, per pillar operation. First thing I like to do is to make it super big so that I know where it is. Yeah, here there is. And next thing is to check if this is correctly aligned. In this case, it's not. I'm going to go to the Orient and I'm going to be rotating this uh, minus 90 to plus 90. Uh, full range, remove. No, it's going to be 180. 
yeah, I want full range uh, because I want to have random uh, rotation along Y. So I can have uh, more pillars and I can have more pillar variations. Copy reference, I create a, a new variation. It's going to be here. And see, it's pointing backwards. I mean, downwards. So that's why it comes super handy to have this uh, unique control per pillar. So now we can uh, rotate minus 180 and 180. Yeah, without full range and, you know, scaling it. Oops, too much. 1.5 and 2, for instance. In case we want less, we, we, we took this down. In case we want a different uh, sorting for the pillars, we change this. As you can see. I just downloaded another uh, Metascan asset just for for speed sake, and I'm gonna be placing it more or less here, and still nothing happens. And the reason why is that uh, is because we need to tell the tool that the, we want this to act as an override in the doors. Uh, sorry, in the inputs. Now I'm gonna be picking this uh, world liner input, uh, start selection, use current selection. And as you can see, the tool is reading this sh the shape of this thing, but it seems to be a bit big. Ah, yeah, there are some values already typed in here. Yeah, now. And finally, we move to the plants section. But uh, again, like in the doors case, we could I could have uh, called this uh, whatever because uh, it's gonna be uh, instancing whatever static mesh or blueprint you 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 fit the, the tool with, so it doesn't have to to be plants actually. So again, you need to create at least one value. Uh, I'm gonna be selecting. A random plant, for instance, this one. Copy reference, paste in the value. I need to tell how many bundles I want. Uh, here's one. Uh, let's try with six. And the size is a bit too big. And the spread is too big again. So if I lower this to 20, for instance, it's going to be limiting the distance between the placement of the, of the plant and the fence itself. We have here another bundle, but in each of these bundles, we can have up to as many as we uh, type in here. For instance, is if I type here three, we can tell the tool how many of each we want. For instance, if I want uh to have uh, this other uh, this second variation to 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 populate double the times the first one appears we have just to tell here to a two and again we can have uh, as many as we want let's try with something something crazy like 30 and the minimum size to be to be one and two. Let's move our character. Let's see how where it is. A bit too far. And and play. And this is our game ready fence. Mm, this this uh, boards are missing the collision. It's a uh, mistake I found and it's not uh, caused by the tool because as you can see it works for the pillar it's I mean I mean when when importing these these uh, assets I will be creating 
uh, next time I will be creating uh, automatic collision. But you can see for the for the door works. And yeah, and that's it. I hope you liked it.